Dr. Suniti Solomon diagnosed the first AIDS case in India in 1986. Today, her practice in the southern city of Chennai is a barometer of what may be the world's largest HIV epidemic, at least in raw numbers. I used to roughly see one new patient a week at that time. Today, I see at least five to six new patients a day and our outpatients has 40 to 50 patients coming in. So that will give you a range over 10 years how the numbers have multiplied. Officially, India has 4 million HIV-infected citizens, but Solomon and others believe the number could be as high as 10 million. And the Washington-based National Intelligence Council has projected that in just seven years, India could have 20 million people living with HIV-AIDS. India's government, though, disputes this vigorously. And perhaps more than most nations, India's response has been slowed by social traditions and class consciousness. Because the first six infections which we detected in Chennai for the whole country were in prostitutes. So the message which went out is it's a disease of the prostitute, just like in the U.S. it was a disease of the gay community. So I always tell people if HIV was first detected in a baby, we would never have had the stigma today what we have or say through blood transfusion. The AIDS epidemic did begin in the red light district of Mumbai or Bombay, India's commercial capital. And it garnered most of the early attention thanks to this man, Dr. Ishwar Gilada, with his trademark safe sex sermons. Today, Dr. Gilada says the results are a mixed bag. The growth in urban area is a little bit stabilized and growth of HIV in rural area is increasing. And that is a dangerous sign because our 70% of the country's population is rural population. There's a lot of migration between urban and rural. Most of the people in Mumbai have access to information, access to tools like condoms, access to going to doctors for STD checkup and also get HIV test done, which is not so in rural areas. And awareness about AIDS is frequently sketchy at best. Most of the people think uh, this disease is the disease of prostitutes or truck drivers, so it can't happen to me. And uh, that is one major reason why I think the infections are spreading. I think the people who are most affected in India are the women. 80% of women who come to us who are infected have a single partner, and that's their husband. Bhagya Lakshmi is 38, HIV positive, and a widow. She's raising two young girls and supporting her elderly mother. Her husband died four years ago of AIDS, which he contracted from a sex worker. Soon after our marriage, we had a lot of problems. He stopped working, he was drinking, he used to hit me. But the one thing I'm really happy about is that he told me the truth when he took the HIV test. That has helped me prepare to deal with it. The truth about sexual mores and the fact that HIV is spreading in upper rungs of India's laddered society is rarely discussed in public. It's made it hard to craft media campaigns. Condom. This television spot was commissioned by the charitable trust of the BBC World Service. A father must confront the reality of his son's sex life. But it was quickly pulled off the air. AIDS advocates say such actions feed the widespread denial. In the land of the Kama Sutra, land of a billion, a land where uh, every man can do what he wants, it's very macho to go and have uh, a relationship out of your family-based uh, relationship. Don't the parents think that this is a problem for young people too? I work in the red light areas. I work and I have seen school kids there. Nafisa Ali recently opened an AIDS care center in Delhi, one of a handful in the country. A former movie star, Ali is an exception in Bollywood. India's huge influential film industry has been largely mum on the issue of AIDS. I did talk to a very forward-thinking like um, director and he said, sure, I'll make a movie. And he made a movie called Nidhan, where he, I don't know if you've seen it, and uh, there they got a 16 or 17-year-old girl infected with HIV. And then, 
and when he brought it to me to you know for my review i said why did you get her infected through blood you should have got her infected through sex he said no that's not our culture you see so they are willing to get somebody infected through blood not through sex i said but that's what is happening today in india if you see more 80% of our infection is through sex and only 6% is through blood others believe the denial extends throughout government from top to bottom there is no ownership the government of india has not spent 1 rupee or 1 dollar from its coffers on hiv program money spent on aids he says has come from international loans and in recent months grants 100 million dollars each from the global fund to fight aids tuberculosis and malaria and the bill and melinda gates foundation with its largest single grant to any country minakshi datta ghosh who heads the government's aids effort admits india was slow to get off the ground but she insists it has turned a corner To begin, Ghosh says an exhaustive survey is underway to get definitive, accurate HIV numbers, which are critical in designing a response. We are ourselves concerned that our figures should be robust, and that the methodologies adopted should be those which have been tried and tested. India is such a vast and complex country; it's a subcontinent. It's not a single, uh, you know, country like. like France or Germany or something like that so the result is that we don't in fact have one epidemic we have several epidemics which are running simultaneously but each of them have their own distinct you know vulnerability they are at different stages of maturity and they have different impacts and that makes the the challenge of disseminating information and generating awareness that much more complex Gosh points to a new more socially acceptable TV campaign. It is gaining huge audiences in the populous north where so far at least HIV rates are still low. AIDS messages are integrated into a new weekly detective series called Jasus Vijay or Detective Vijay. Main HIV vishanu jo aage jaakar AIDS ka roop dharan kar leta hai usi ki baat kar raha hu. Subtle messages on HIV AIDS and the dangers of high risk behavior and the need to practice safe uh, you know social and sexual behavior uh, is being uh, talked about at prime time so it is definitely beginning to change and and uh, you know in a meaningful uh, way not just you know a flash in the pan kind of change ghost says the government is working more closely with non government groups and the private sector especially under terms of its global fund grant She says one key focus will be on preventing mother to child transmission of HIV. Every year over 92,000 HIV positive mothers give birth to babies. And more often than not they are they are HIV positive unless they have you know we have interceded with medication. And these are registered births. There may be many more which are unregistered. Global fund dollars will also be used to develop pilot projects to bring antiretroviral drugs to HIV patients. So now these are some of the drugs here. Duovir, this is three drugs in one. It's known as Trimune. It costs roughly about $32 a month, which is also a, a lot of money for most of our patients. That's that's almost the annual income of the average Indian person. Right. Yeah. and it's still a fraction of what the cost is in the west yeah definitely but even then it's too much dr solomon will use grant money in an enterprise that will provide the drugs to patients at prices based on their incomes it's actually a public private partnership where the private is the drug company the generic drug company would sell drugs to us at cost price to treat 1000 patients and we would give Uh, out of the 1000 20% will be the rich who would pay for the drugs and then the next uh, slot which is the middle income group will pay 50% and then the lower middle income group will pay 25% and the very poor below the poverty line would pay i wouldn't pay anything it would be free you know so the money which comes from this would be circulated and over a period of 5 years it becomes sustainable If successful the program could greatly expand access to the life sustaining drugs. Bhagya Lakshmi will likely be an early beneficiary of the pilot project. பெருக்குறவங்க யாருமே உயிரோட ரொம்ப நாள் இருக்க மாட்டாங்க. 
I'll be happy just to live long enough to see my girls married. I haven't needed antiretroviral therapy yet. My CD4 cell count has been good so far. With HIV diagnosis no longer a death sentence, Dr. Solomon predicts more people will come in earlier to be tested. The minute you say HIV doesn't kill, it's become a chronic disease. We can treat just like diabetes or hypertension. You know, people will think, if I'm at risk, why not take advantage? And also when we do awareness at that time, we are going to say, look, the earlier you come for uh, management of your condition, you'll have a better quality of life. You may start on drugs later. So people will come forward. But then there is the flip side of it is if we start saying, okay, it's not anymore a killer disease. You know, it's become a chronic disease. We have drugs, then people can become less complacent have more risky behavior. So, you know, you have to balance both these properly if you want to give the right message to the community. There's also hope that relegating AIDS to just another chronic, manageable disease will remove some of the stigma and encourage frank discussion. That is something that a globalized India's children are increasingly ready for, as Dr. Solomon learned in a recent sex ed class. And some child in the group wrote out on a slip of paper and sent, uh, does uh, HIV spread through blowjob? And I had no clue what blowjob was because we're not used to all these words. But you know how much our kids know about this. And then I had, I was just looking blank. And then a girl quickly wrote out in another slip saying oral sex and she sent it up to me. So I knew what that meant. So the kids yeah. were teaching you? They were teaching us. In a way. And when the management, and this was in a convent, a Catholic convent, when the management heard this, they were shocked. And then after the program was over and they walked up to me, I was a little worried. Now what is she going to do? The nun. So she said, I want you to come and do sex education to every class of my students. With comprehensive surveillance, prevalence data, media campaigns, and projects to distribute drugs, India now has some elements in place to begin containing the spread of HIV. What many experts say it does not have is much time.